Hello, folks. Welcome to Classic Rock and Country Music Facts and Trivia. Appreciate you being here. Uh, today's video is on uh, the classic song that gave Led Zeppelin their name. I did not know this until I saw this, so let's take a look. In the age of pop culture, you've got to be uh, you got to be the complete package. After a pre-fame spell working in advertising, a young Frank Zappa came to realize that music had become exactly 50% about image. Now, while he might have overstated that a little, uh, it no doubt helped Led Zeppelin that they had a name fit for main stages. Granted, they also had an assortment of finest musicians in the world, but if they were dressed like Cl Cliff Richard and went by the name of Sixpence None the Richer, then they might not have been as well off. As it happens, their name arrived via happenstance. It all happened about one sunny May in 1966. Jeff Beck was in the Yardbirds at the time, but he was seeking the chance of a side project. So he summoned his pal Jimmy Page to IBC Studios in London. Uh, a song began to take shape as the studio shared ideas, and a full band was called upon. Beck wanted to un the ensemble the greats, so he contacted his favorite drummer, Keith Moon. At the time, Moon was disgruntled with the ways things were going uh, in The Who, but was not disgruntled enough to forego a disguise. So when he did arrive in the studio to work with Beck, he did so in blackout shades and a Russian Cossack hat, uh, creating perhaps the most conspicuous cartoonish masquerade in history. And I'm not Keith Moon t-shirt might have been more convincing. Anyway, he turned up all the same, which was more than you could say with, uh, for the recommended basis, John and Whistle who had also been discontent with The Who, but was seemingly not discontent enough. To serve as replacement, studio musicians John Paul Jones and Nicky Hopkins were called in to play on bass and piano, respectively. As of yet, uh, these were not huge names they would soon go on to be. The song that this mind-boggling assortment eventually crafted was Bex Bolero, even though Jimmy Page was claimed that he crafted a composition. Regardless of the disputed uh, writing credit that followed, and in truth, has never fully gone away in the years since Beck and his esteemed cronies stood around impressed by their work. Suddenly there was murmurings that they uh, should form a group. Naturally, this wouldn't have pleased the likes of Pete Townsend, who stood to lose his rhythm section, which prompted Moon to utter that the side project would go down like a lead zeppelin. The rest is ancient history. But once again, it's a very blurry. Beck's manager, Peter Grant, who subsequently managed Led Zeppelin when the name was formalized and Page shacked up with Jones alongside John Bonham and Robert Plant. Claims that Moon actually used a more commonplace phrase, go down like a lead balloon, to which Whistle, who suddenly appeared in the tail out of nowhere, perhaps the pub after the sessions added, more like a lead zeppelin, according to Chris Welch's book, Peter Grant, The Man Who Led Zeppelin. And there you go. I thought that was a really cool story. I, I had no idea that that's where it came from. But uh, very neat, very cool. And it really worked. It <laughs> extremely worked, along with the great musicians that was in the band and the great music they played. That's all I have for you. Uh, don't forget the classic TV facts and trivia, the Beverly Hillbillies facts and trivia, off till Monday. Um, Andy Griffith Show facts and trivia is up and running. If you want to go over there and check that out. Everybody loves Andy, right? And Barney. Uh, please don't forget to like this video. Have a great day. God bless. Be praying for you.